everybody, I'm Allie and welcome to my YNR chat for Sunday, January 2nd, 2011. Happy New Year everyone. I hope that you had a great one. Um, if you had any New Year's resolutions, I would love to hear them. Feel free to um, leave me a comment and let me know what you guys are doing to, to celebrate the New Year. Um, it was pretty much out of the frying pan and into the volcano for Sharon and Adam this week. Um, Sharon was hot on Sky's trail this week in Hawaii, waka waka. <laughs> and gee, I don't know how anyone could possibly have noticed Sky incognito because she was wearing that top notch Pippi long stocking wig. I mean, it probably cost what would you say thirteen dollars at the at the party wig store? I don't know how anybody could possibly have recognized her, but. Sky, being the adrenaline junkie that she apparently was, decides to go on some kind of like crazy night volcano hike. <laughs> and uh, after getting absolutely no clues from any of the locals, Sharon decides to go embarking upon this journey up the volcano. Um, and honestly, I can tell you one thing right now. I would not take a hike up a volcano being led by that spacey surfer dude who was leading the way for the, the, the guide. Like, I, I, don't know, I don't know about you guys, but like, I don't care how good the sex with Adam is. Nothing could make me follow that guy up into a volcano, I'll tell you right now. And literally like during all of those scenes, I'm yelling at the screen, oh Sharon, you do not want to mess around inside this volcano. Just turn around, girl, turn around. Oh girl, don't fall into the volcano now. <laughs> I was literally like screaming at the screen. I mean, like, uh, and like, where else other than daytime will you ever be caught uttering the phrase "Don't fall into the volcano"? I mean, that's it was it was such a quintessential daytime thing to have happened. Um, but I I enjoyed it. Um, Sky and Sharon finally had a chance to meet face to face, although no one's gonna believe Sharon later about it. Um, Sky is totally flippant as ever. She doesn't care that she's framed Adam for murder. I mean, she's she she could care less. She's in it for revenge. And Sharon, on the other hand, is completely desperate. It, it was in fact very sad watching how desperately she was clinging on to this and, and, and trying to make it work. So Sharon actually manages to take a photo of Skye, which would have been perfect. I mean, I, it was almost hard to believe she's just standing there like, I'm gonna stamp a photo of you. Like, I'm sure that's gonna, that would have worked out. But, um, so the, Sharon takes this photo the two of them struggle to get control of the camera, and uh, there was a lot of moving around, and uh, 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 there was a lot of this. And um, then it was curtains for Sky. <laughs> Sky fell over the edge, but not before Sharon had a chance to, um, you know, she had a, a moment of trying to save Sky, and more importantly, Sky's last words. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed Sky's last words. Sharon said to her, I'm not gonna let you die, Sky. And Sky just looked up to her and said, I wouldn't bet on it. And then psh, fell into the fiery, volcano y, lava y abyss. <laughs> she probably could have survived it. Who knows? I still feel like Drew is hanging around at the bottom of a cliff in Africa somewhere. And, and actually, on that note, uh, wasn't Sharon in that scene when, when Drew fell off the cliff? I think so. I think uh, it was uh, mainly Phyllis and Drew, but Sharon was in there too. So this is the second person <laughs> in Sharon's lifetime that she's had to accidentally watch fall off of a cliff. What are the odds? <laughs> That's another only in daytime kind of thing. Um, anyway, this whole time, Victor is meanwhile slinking around in the background. Um, I, I'm honestly kind of surprised that Victor even followed Sharon to Hawaii. I mean, surely he had some other form of communication set up 
with Sky to where, you know, he didn't need to go there himself. He could have just called her and told her to be on the lookout about all of this. But then again, that wouldn't have been very exciting and he wouldn't have been able to destroy the evidence. Who knows, maybe Victor was going there to kill Skye before uh, before Sharon could even get to him. We don't really know what Victor's motives are and um, it, it doesn't really matter anyway because Victor managed to escape yet again. I wish I could, you know, count it on, on my fingers how many times he's escaped. He just kind of destroyed the evidence and then just sort of stepped back into the shadows. Uh, you know, and it's kind of, weird because usually we don't really even ever see Victor committing these, you know, these things. It seems like everything bad that Victor does always kind of happens off screen. You know, we never actually see him doing it, but it was great to actually see him piling all of Sky's clothes into a little ball and then, you know, pouring the gas all over her little Hawaiian hut and then light in the match. I thought that was, it was good to see. It just, it feels like Victor's villainy is usually kind of behind the scenes. You know, it's not something that we actually see right there on the screen, and it was interesting to see that, to see him actually just doing this really horrible thing right in front of us. Um, there was a, a really nice shot of the perfume bottle being engulfed by the flames as the, as the hut went up. I thought it was very cool. It was a very Citizen Kane kind of moment. Uh, it's my second Citizen Kane reference in two weeks, but you know, like with you know the rosebud sled being consumed by the flames at the end of that film, it was very that. Uh, but it was it was poetic. I I uh, just thought that was a nice little touch seeing seeing that last little piece of evidence just going up in flames. Um, so another really nice, interesting little moment this week. It was early in the week, and it was before Victor left to to go to Hawaii. He goes to the jail cell to visit Adam, and he actually says to Adam, flat out, you know, you have inherited none of your mother's good qualities. And Adam just looks right back at him, and without missing a beat, says that if I am none of her, then that means I am all of you. And I really thought that was a wonderful moment. It kind of encapsulated everything that's going on in this storyline. I mean, Victor is the last person who should be throwing these stones. I mean, really, when you boil it all down to the bare bones, Victor and Adam are exactly alike. And somebody made that point, actually, last week. Um, you know, I was kind of comparing uh, Nick and Victoria to their father and trying to decide, who, you know, which of them was more like, you know, their father. And really, I think someone mentioned it and it totally enlightened me that Adam is probably the child who is most like his father. I really never, you know, really thought of that before, but it's so very, very true. And I thought that was a, a really great moment. Um... Because, I mean, Victor never ends up paying for his crimes. Ever. And honestly, I think that Adam probably never will either. So, that being said, what's going to be the turning point for Adam? What do you guys think? Do you have any predictions about how the storyline is going to develop? Because I'm kind of wondering, you know, will Victor have a change of heart? and decide to give Sharon the evidence that she needs to, 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 to get Adam off the hook? Not bloody likely. <laughs> I suppose it's possible. I don't know. Well, will maybe the store owner uh, decide to give up the ghost once he realizes that Victor just burned down their entire village? <laughs> I don't know. That could be a possibility. Or my question is, where is the camera? Where is the camera? Because we never really saw it fall off the edge of the cliff. And so my theory is that the camera is still out there. And if you find the camera, Adam goes free. Andy and Ducky at last. Bravo! I really have to tell you guys, Kevin and Chloe this week had me in 
peers, no question about it. Like I, I had no idea about the uh, this whole original ending of Pretty in Pink. I mean, everybody knows that movie, right? I had no idea that the original ending was that Andy really wanted Ducky the whole time, which is what I wanted. I wanted that. I, if, if that's even true, I don't even know if that's a true story. <laughs> Why not? I could have totally just tacked that on there and I would have no idea. But I mean, Kevin and Chloe are such an unlikely pair that it just works. And I've gone through such a range of emotions about the whole, you know, relationship, the whole thing. But the bottom line is they're finally together and I really, I hope it lasts. I, I for their sake, for everyone's sake involved and, and, and for our sake, I do hope at last, you know, I hope that they are happy together. Because with Chloe standing in the street in her sheep jammies, <laughs> God, that was cute. And the, the New Year's clock countdown ticking in the background. I was I was totally in that moment. How could you not be a sucker for that? I mean, I there was no way I was going to not fall for that. I, especially the New Year's countdown and the, the, the contrast of Kevin and Chloe's two personalities. It was very, it reminded me very much of when Harry met Sally, which is a truly excellent film, by the way. I just rewatched that recently, just within the last couple of months, and uh, Rob Reiner, the whole, and Billy Crystal, Meg Ryan, it, that's such a good film. If you're digging on the Kevin and Chloe thing right now, watch, watch your Pretty in Pink, and then watch When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> it's very that, and it's totally worth a rewatch. And um, I guess most importantly here, I feel like major kudos is in order to Elizabeth Hendrickson as Chloe, especially this past week. I just thought she was brilliant and believable and I just have really loved her this week. I, I've really loved the unfolding of this whole story and the roller coaster of emotions that I've gone through with it. Except for now. <laughs> way to ruin the moment, Jana. Just way to ruin the moment. I what's she going to do? I mean, just judging from the preview of Monday's show, what's she going to do? Bash herself upside of the head, run over to the glowing new couple all bloody and begging for help? Is that the plan? Daisy is in labor, driving a stolen car, and now she's on the run from the fuzz. <laughs> yeah, she's Daisy is g -g -g gone, but you can bet on this. She will be back. She will so be back. I, I can almost guarantee it. But I mean, who would have thought six months ago or a year ago that Jana would be the one to facilitate releasing Daisy upon to the world too and really and and Jana's reasoning too was so sinister I mean she was like if everybody you know is so concerned about you know Daisy being on the run then I'm gonna let him I'm gonna let him be afraid I want to unleash this hell upon these people it was very sinister um and uh, just like watching her recant her police statement ugh, ugh, what a betrayal you know, to, to, to Lauren and to herself, you know, I mean, she, she, she seriously needs to get some help. I'm surprised that she isn't just pretending to be pregnant since she managed to get Kevin in bed one last time. I mean, honestly, I kind of am wondering if that might be her plan B. <laughs> <laughs> now that the Daisy's baby idea didn't quite pan out for her. Yeah, she popped the champagne cork on that little plan just a little bit too soon. So I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if she was doing a fake O pregnancy here in the very ne near future. I mean, she's just trying so hard. Jenna is just trying so hard and fighting so hard in all of the wrong ways. And it's heart breaking because I liked Jana. I mean, I, I want, I want to like Jana. I want to, I want to, you know, open up to her, but she's just making me so sad. I mean, she really put all of her hopes into this whole Daisy baby basket. She totally thought that this whole thing was going to change her life and it just totally did not. It, completely backfired on her. And 
as she started to tell Kevin um, about how she was going to the police station and recanting her story and how this was going to make everything perfect between them again, you could just see in Kevin's eyes that his heart was breaking too because this woman that he, you know he's realizing that this woman that he once loved so deeply and connected with so profoundly is now completely cuckoo i mean really it's 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 heartbreaking and i and i guess the only good thing about it is that that is what ended up causing kevin to flip his position about raising Daisy's baby. That was the catalyst that completely changed his mind. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad, because I did not want to see Kevin raising the baby, and I did not want to see Phyllis raising this baby. I just, I find it very disrespectful of everyone who was just refusing to take Daniel's feelings into consideration here, and they were just completely playing into to Daisy's hand. I mean, you know, Phyllis and Kevin were playing the part of, you know, the caring family member, but, I mean, really, truly, we know, because we're watching it from, you know, a third-party perspective, we know that this is all part of Daisy's little grand plan, so we know that Daniel was actually having kind of the right instinct, and as Kevin pointed out, uh, you know, family doesn't necessarily mean best. You know, I kept feeling like they should just adopt the baby out and give her a chance to start with a clean slate. You know, I mean, everybody deserves that. And I was kind of hoping that was the direction they were going to go. I really don't know wh what direction they're going to go now that Daisy's on the lamb. I, I mean, I guess all of that being said, I still really like Daisy. I mean, I, I hope we get to see her again, honestly, and I'll be looking forward to it because I... I like the actress. I like what she brings. I like her whole vibe. I feel like she does an equally phenomenal job of playing a sweet and likable character and, you know, an equally equally as good at playing like this fanged she-devil. Well, you guys, those are my thoughts for this week. It's kind of an abbreviated vlog. Um, this morning at 4.40 a.m. my grandmother passed away. She was 90 and she had lung cancer. And I was with her when she went. It was really hard. It's been a really hard day. I haven't really slept very much. But I really loved my grandmother, and she was my great-grandmother, actually. And she lived to be 90, and she had a really, just such a cool attitude. Like, she was so relaxed and so positive and so fun, and I really got to spend a lot of time with her within the last couple of years, and I'm so grateful for that. She kind of reminds me of me, or I remind, you know, her of me. I mean, if you can picture me at 90, that's pretty much what she was. She was always so positive and so cheerful and never complained, even up until the end. You know, when she's laying in a bed and, you know, having to take medication. She never complained. And she loved her family so much. And we loved her. I miss her. I miss her already. This is very fresh 
This just happened this morning. But I got to be with her in the end, and I'm so glad for that. I'm so grateful to have known her. And we're going to have, you know, the visitation and the funeral this week. And um, it's probably going to be a pretty busy week. But, you know, I wanted to talk about it a little bit just because it's, it's on my mind. And... Maybe if anybody out there is going through something similar, maybe you can leave me a comment. <laughs> or leave me a comment about the show this week. It definitely, I don't want, I don't mean to bring the house totally down. I mean, the reason why I wanted to do my vlog today is because I'm desperately wanting <laughs> some normality, you know, I want some sense of things being normal again, and uh, I know that you guys seem to really enjoy it, and that makes me happy if I can make you happy, and um, you know, you guys give a lot back to me too. So, your comments about the show are totally appreciated, um, they'll help me take take my mind off of everything, um, or your comments about anything, you know, I feel like this is, you know, also a really nice community of people just kind of sharing, just sharing, just chatting about what's going on on the show and in life, and, um, if anybody has some great words of wisdom, <laughs> please feel free to pass it along if, if, if you could, maybe just keep me in your thoughts a little bit this week. I'd really appreciate it, as I could use the extra strength for me and for my family. I hope that everybody out there is doing well, and that you all have a wonderful week, a wonderful new year. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye!